Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to find the area of a triangle, of an oblique triangle, I'm sorry. So previously when you've learned how to find the area of a triangle, you know, we looked at, you know, first of all, we looked at right triangles and we, um, you know, went through that the area equals one half times base times the height. And basically you're always given, you know, what the values were of the base and the height. Um, then we, you know, started looking at some different oblique triangles, but maybe we would give you you know, what the height was, as well as what the base was. And, you know, so it didn't always have to be right triangles, but you were always given these values, or we were able to use trigonometry, special right triangles, um, or other properties of triangles to be able to identify and determine what exactly the height was, as well as what the length of the base was. So we always, even if they weren't directly given to us, like in this example, um, we further looked into identifying, you know, using our properties of triangles to find the height as well as to find the base, but then we could find the area. Well, in oblique triangles, you know, which are triangles that are going to be just like this, what we're going to do is learn how to find the area without having the height. So what we're going to do is I have um, the information provided to us, and I always think it's helpful, especially when doing problems like this, to always kind of sketch the graph, just to kind of give you a visual. Um, you know, it doesn't need to be perfect. We know that 30 degrees is acute, so I'm just gonna make, you know, I'm gonna have an acute angle here, and I'll call that B. And so therefore, I know that my opposite side here is going to, is also going to, uh, that's gonna be side B. And then let's see, this one A is shorter than C, so we'll say that's A, which is three, and that's C, which is um, six, and that is 30 degrees. It doesn't need to be perfect, um, you know, as I mentioned, but just something to kind of give you a visual of this. So the formula basically states here is, um, and it doesn't matter, you can see that I wrote these kind of interchangeably. Um, the area of a oblique triangle is equal to one half um, one side times the other side times the sine of your angle. So it, it, you could really just take one of these and just interchange the variables, but I wrote them all down there so you can kind of see. And I see for, find out for a lot of students that's usually uh, the easiest way for them to get started. So basically when identifying this, the one way to go about this is to take a look at your angle that you have. In this case, I'm given angle B. And so I'll just look at this formula. So I can say area is equal to one half A times C times the sine of B, which is 30 degrees. Now, oops, sine of B. Now, I just input the information. So I plug in my value for A, which is three, plug in my value of C, which is six, and then plug in my angle, which in this case is 30 degrees. Now, hopefully by the unit circle, you know that the sine of 30 degrees is going to be one half, but maybe you don't, I don't know. You can always go back and use your calculator, which we'll be doing for the rest of these angles. But just make sure when you're, um, when you're typing these in that your calculator is in degree mode, and then you can just type in sine of 30 degrees and see that it's equal to 0.5, which is the same thing as one half. So anyways, area equals um, one half times three times six times one half. So therefore I have uh, six times three, which is uh, 18 times one half is nine. Nine times one half is going to be nine halves or A equals 4.5. Okay, we don't have any um, measurements here on there. So, or any way to quantize it. So we're just gonna leave this as units. Um, 4.5 units squared is basically going to be our uh, measurement here, or our area. All right, so in the next one here, I have a similar triangle looks like it. So I'm just going to kind of create something. And now I'm just going to call this A. And it doesn't really matter. Actually, you know what? Let's just move this around. You can create your triangles however you want to create them. But I know that A is acute, so I'm just going to say that's A, and that's 36 degrees. Let's see. A, side C is larger, so I'm going to say that's C, which is 40. So that means that has to be B, which is 20. And let's see, so that's A, so that's big C, and that's big B. Even though they're not asking us to find those angles, I sometimes I think it's helpful to write those out there. So you can see we're given angle A, so therefore I'm going to use this formula, or at least write that down. So the area, I'll write out area because I don't want to confuse area A with angle area, um, is going to be 1 half times B times C times the sine of A. So we're still looking for area, which I'll maybe use a subscript. 
A is equal to area is 1 half times B, which in this case is 20, times C, which is 40, times the sine of 36 degrees. Okay, so therefore area equals, uh, let's see, 1 half times 20 is 10, 10 times 40 is going to be 400, and then times the sine of 36 degrees. And I'm just going to use my calculator. I'm not going to type that all in. I'll just do 400 times the sine of 36. And I get area is going to be approximately 235.11 units squared. And I'll just round to the nearest uh, hundredth here in this case. All right, um, so now let's go ahead and move over to another example. You can see now in this example, I'm looking for angle C. So I'm going to be using this formula. Um, again, you can see it's another acute angle, so you can draw your triangle however you like. I'm just going to label the same one. I'll call this one now C. I can see that B is larger than A, so in my angle, I'll say that's B, and this is A. Now, you notice I also have feet, right? So I'm going to make sure that I'm including my measurements here now that I have some uh, units to, to kind of quantify all my information. So anyways, I have area, which is just going to be A equals 1 half lowercase a um, times B times the sine of C. And remember, A represents the area. So I have 1 half times A, which is 20, times B, which is 50, times the sine of C, which is 22 degrees. Okay. And again, I can kind of multiply my numbers here before getting a sign. 1 half times 20 is 10. 10 times 50 is 500. A equals 500 times the sine of 22 degrees. So now I just type in my calculator, 500 times the sine of 22 degrees. And I get 187, approximately 187.30. And then I got to make sure I include my measurement, which is feet squared. Okay. Now on this last one, this one's kind of an interesting, we can see we have an obtuse angle. So we have to draw a triangle that has an obtuse angle. All these triangles have not had an obtuse angle. So just draw an obtuse triangle. It doesn't need to be perfect. So we'll call this 124 degrees and we'll call that C. You can see um, A and B are pretty close in length, right? But we'll just call this one B and this one A. And again, notice we have measurements this time. So again, we're looking for C, so we're going to use the same formula. A equals 1 half A times B times the sine of C. A equals 1 half A, which is 4, times B, which is 6, times the sine of 124 degrees. A equals 1 half times 2 times 6 is going to be 12. And really, in reality, that's 12 uh, meter squared times the sine of 124 degrees, but I will add that at the very end. So I do 12 times the sine of 124, and I get 9 point uh, rounded up to 5, so area equals 9.95, and that's meters squared. Okay, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you uh, determine the area of an oblique triangle. Thanks.